in the past week, I've heard something called a bit net. And when I look at it, it has interesting promises. So with this new large language model, it will consume, it will need lower memory, it will consume lower energy, and as a result, and maybe like related um, other features, it will compute faster. So this plot is from uh, the paper that is about the bitnet. So it's comparing the bitnet, which is represented in the orange line and the orange data, as compared to the LAMA models um, in full precision. We will, we will, I will talk about the full precision in, in, in the next, uh, next slide. But now this bit net model is compared to the traditional um, LAMA based uh, transformer. In this plot, it shows on the X, X axis is the model size, like how big the model is, um, like 7 billion parameters, 3 billion parameters, and so on. On the Y axis, now this plot is latency, how long it takes for the model to give you an answer. You can see that the latency for the bitnet is significantly um, shorter than the LAMA full model ones on the average of uh, about 3x to 4x actually the so from from the trend i see here the larger the model size the more uh, the more you you save in terms of latency the faster what the model is in terms of the memory again this is obvious um, for the bitnet the more the larger the model it seems like the 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 bitnet model can save more and more memory for the model right in terms of energy consumption it has reached up to like 30x and 40x energy needed and this is very important for companies if you are walking down the path of sustainability right so you can see that this bitnet has high promises and the potentials are, to me at least, it's it's huge. When the model can run with lower memory and lower energy, it's suitable for running the model on edge devices like your mobile phone or um, IoT computer, computer at the edge, far away from the data center, something like this. If the model can run, uh, sorry, if the computer on the mobile phones can run um, the BitNet uh, large language model that has the capability of, let's say, GPT-4 as we have now, what kind of application that it, it will unlock is huge, right? In terms of the company, if you want to custom, uh, custom made your model by fine-tuning it, it's more affordable as well. The model is no longer really big. You can, you might be able to train it on very affordable GPU or even a CPU, right? And as a human race, um, towards uh, sustainability and reduce energy consumption is the goal. And yeah, this is that. This is why I'm very excited about this this model. And I hope this is going to be made in production and adopt um, uh, globally. All right, let's dig a little bit deeper. So hang on, hang on tight. All right, so large language models are made of neural networks called transformer. And inside a transformer is a lot of numbers, usually floats. And these floats need to be uh, undergone math uh, operations mostly multiplication and addition. This is time consuming and energy uh, energy consuming as well. But what are the floats? Floats are number with decimal points. An example is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is an example of a float. One, uh, one the number one, if you represent it as 1.0000, is now a float rather than an integer. So inside a transformer, it has a lot of floats, and each value, like 
each float value needs right now it needs 16 bits to represent 16 bits remember computers are made of bits right 0 and 1 so one floating number needs 16 1 and 0 bits to represent therefore for a 1 billion parameters large language model it will need 16 billion bits or roughly 4 gigabytes of memory to hold it so by the way um, parameters of the uh, large language model are, are usually called weights so we might be interchangeably use the terms parameters and weight um, interchangeably so transformer has floats floats need bits to carry and each float in full precision it takes 16 bits the consequence of the floating precision is that the more floating precision you hold the more memory it takes and the slower the computation of multiplication and addition it takes and uh, what you can see what you are seeing on the right hand side is the decoding uh, stack of the transformer of the large language model and it's everywhere like in linear path in addition path feed forward path multi-head attention you have floats everywhere and multiplication and addition everywhere this is where the memory is taken energy is taken time is taken there the community research community and industry community as a whole knows this capability sorry know this limitation or uh, try knows that this is a problem we need to solve one of the way that we are trying to do is uh, to do this to solve this is called quantization essentially means reducing the precision points that we need to represent the model and compute the model so fp16 is a full precision this is the the standard way or the original way of how the large language model is represented it needs 16 bits to represent one float number popular quantizations dropped the precision from 16 bits to 8 bits or 4 bits so this is what is popular or standard procedure right now the bit net is very extreme it reduces the bit to just one bit you can't go below that zero bits means nothing you don't do, do anything at all you just walk away there's no information so this is the most extreme quantization that um, the community is trying to do to solve this problem so what is typically happening in quantization workflow is that there are two types the first type is like this people will train the model train the large language model at full precision fp16 and once you get the model you quantize it you chop out precisionness and what so for example you quantize it to int 8 or int 4 what happens is that the model will have degraded performance this is known in the industry and the research community right now the second approach is a little bit difficult a little bit more difficult it involves a training that is um, adapt to quantization so the quantization is now embedded in the training process um, it's called quantization aware training it helps with avoiding degraded performance but there are challenges like the conversion of the training is not easy and the scaling like how how um, when the model grows in parameter sizes what about its capability what about its uh, accuracy the scaling law is unclear how it's going right now this is from uh, oh I forgot to mention all of the information that I am telling you now is from these two papers they are uh, researchers from Microsoft and you can actually go to um, you can Google this bitnet paper and you will arrive at these two papers it's a it's a cool read it's not that difficult at all 
All right. So from from the papers, this is what uh, is described my summarization here. Um, so take a look at this plot. The x-axis is the bits, the number of the bits. So usually people start here, right? Training and training at full precision, 16 bit. And during usage or inference time, they try to quantize it. So they chop it. They chop the number of precisions. This is the purple, uh, purple line here. And accordingly, you see the performance, the accuracy of that uh, modeled, the quantized or chopped precision dropped. This is the de de uh, degradation in performance that I mentioned. On the other hand, the bit net started being trained at one bit. And that's it. You don't need to quantize it. You don't need to quantize it anymore. It's over there. And it seems like it can uphold the accuracy. It is actually better than um, starting training at full precision and quantize it later. So this is the premise of this paper. It shows that you can get a good large language model by uh, starting with a one bit net. Uh, yeah, this, so this is this is one of the second paper mentioned. Uh, it is a variation of the bit net. So one, one, uh, one, one number in the transformer can represent three values, minus one, zero, and one. What results here is that multi now the operation of multiplication is no longer needed. You avoid this at all so it's faster and very very energy efficient because you don't need to do multiplication at all this is significant um, and if this is actually true and it can be productionized you will get to see a new hardware GPU is optimized for multiplication and addition but if you don't need to have multiplication at all there will be a new hardware that is suitable for this type of model Okay, now um, one of the cool thing that the papers, the others of the paper have done is that they they proposed this model that is compatible with current libraries or current models. Here, I'm comparing the bitnet architecture and the traditional full precision transformer. They are essentially the same, except minor modifications in the code so this is the full precision um, transformer you have you you are seeing different modules like the attention head uh, module and the feed forward module so in these modules you have linear uh, operations linear operations just means that you need to multiply metrics and matrices uh, some addition and then some uh, that's it and that's a linear uh, multiplication so this is a typical way that neural networks will have. Now, the proposed bitnet replaces the linear multiplication with a bit linear, in which this is the bit linear um, module, in which weights or parameters are just one, zero, and sometimes minus one. Um, and this removes mul uh, multiplication from the picture. And the way the researcher has done is that it ac they actually we place the linear operation in the transformer with the bit linear transformer, and that's it. And they also have provided some implementation examples in PyTorch and made it available on GitHub. So you can actually go there on GitHub, pull your uh, pull the the code and try to implement the bitnet yourself. So what about the performance, right? Well, the architecture is nice, the idea is nice, but if it can't compete with um, typical large language model, there is no point. In the paper as well, they compare the bitnet itself to the Llama um, full precision model with different sizes, parameter sizes. So, um, 
So if the model size, say, 700 million parameters, if the model size are not big, the performance right here, the performance of the bitnet is lower than the full precision, for sure, right? But what is interesting is that once you keep increasing the model size, let's say from 700, 700 million parameter to 1.3 billion parameter, or even larger, like 3 billion parameter, you can see that the gap, the performance gap dropped. Um, essentially, now, if you compare the Lama, Lama index, oh, sorry, Lama 3 billion parameter to BitNet, almost 4 billion parameter you can see that the binet itself the bit bitnet 4 billion parameter actually win over the lama 3 billion but the cost of uh, using this model like the memory and the latency actually are still much lower you see like 3x lower for memory and 2x lower in latency so what it means is that you can increase the bit nets, uh, the size of the bit net, so that it matches the full precision transformer while still having um, multiple benefit in memory and latency performance. This is great. So, as I mentioned, you can um, go on to uh, uh, GitHub and find um, implementation in PyTorch for the bit net itself. It's written in Python compatible with PyTorch. So let's use it. Thank you very much for watching our video. If you like it, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Case Done by AI, and see you at our next video.